When aspects of a complex case exceed your personal expertise, you bring in a co-counsel to add the specific insight your firm needs for next level results. Marketing in the legal industry requires complex strategy and insight far beyond anything you learned in law school. Want more for your law firm? Time to bring in a marketing co-counsel. Welcome to CounselCast. I'm your host, Karin Conroy, your marketing co-counsel. In every episode, I discuss marketing topics with experts who answer your questions and help your firm achieve more. Here's today's guest. I am Kristen Jolai, a solo practitioner in Minnesota. I practice workers' compensation law, and I just launched a business called Lure of Law, which is all about mentoring other attorneys who wish to go solo. Kristen, thank you so much for being here. We have so many cool things to talk about, and we have like this great small world overlap with the Minnesota connection, but... There are so many cool things that I saw recently. You're very active on Instagram and social media. So I can't wait to get to those. But before we do that, the first, the big question we're going to talk about today is how can your network help you launch? So there's a lot of areas that we can go with that. But let's start by talking about, first of all, how you've launched Lure of Law and how you took this really cool and unique approach just in your own launch. Okay. So Lure of Law really, it came out of something that I was already doing a lot. So when I started my law firm three years ago, there were so many attorneys who reached out to me, um, both attorneys that I knew and didn't know, who reached out to me and said, how did you do that? Or who did you use for malpractice insurance? Or where are you getting your clients? And I think that the main thing that they wanted to know is, if you did it, can I do it? And I was playing this mentoring role for so many different people that I just thought, there must be a need for this. And so I also think that being a solo practitioner is one of the best kept secrets in law. I just can't even tell you how different my life is. Um, well, tell me about that. Cause I think yeah. that is, there's a lot of fear around that. There's oh, a lot yeah. of safety and comfort in staying mm-hmm. with, you know, in any kind of corporate uh, yeah. world, but especially for lawyers whose job is to mitigate risk. <laughs> and yeah. So the idea of taking that leap is really full of fear. So Absolutely. tell me about being on the other side of it and why, how that is kind of positively impact your life in general. Yeah. Okay. So if I put myself back in my shoes of when I was working for a firm, I was paid handsomely. I, you know, I was paid well and I had a sure. steady paycheck and that always feels good. Um, but I was grinding. I was just living this life that was service to my employer and not service to me, not service to my family. And I just brought home my most tired self. Whatever I had left in my tank was what I had for my family. And then after that is what I had left for myself. And the way I was practicing just, it was just no way to live a life. And so I just started thinking. The other thing that was happening happening simultaneously was I was at the firm, um, I had been there for five years and I was getting close or I was getting more into a leadership role. And I kept getting into these meetings where we were talking about best practices and growth and um, operations. And I just kept thinking, you know, this is the meeting where I'm going to find out like, the real secret to running a firm or this yeah. is this is the meeting where I'm going to learn what's what's really so hard about this. And that day just never came. I just <laughs> kept sitting in these meetings like I can do exactly what we're doing. And, nice. and why am I not doing this for myself? Yeah. And so I finally just decided, oh gosh, it's it's time. It's time yeah. to try this. And I really committed to um, saying, you know, th- the failure is not a law firm not working out. The failure is never trying it. Yes. So I I just went for it. And when I was going for it, I didn't know a lot of people who had gone solo. I knew a couple. Yeah. And I knew enough. Um, and, I, and I think I'm outgoing enough to call on other people and just to say, can I ask you some questions or yeah. this is what I'm thinking of doing. But there's also a little degree of secrecy to it, especially, you know, uh, we talked about we have this Minnesota connection. Yeah. You can't just blast out to your entire network. Hey, I'm thinking of going solo because 
you don't want your current, you don't always want your current right. employer Before to know Before it that. happens, you have to kind of protect that idea yes. a little bit. Sure. And so if you don't have a lot of people that you can trust that, that have gone so low to ask those questions to, you really have to be careful because you sure. don't want the news out there before it's supposed to be. So I was calling on various people and people were extremely generous with their time. People really helped me when I was launching my law firm. And I'm just in this beautiful space now where I have enough time for my clients. I have enough yeah. time for myself and I have a, enough time for my family, which is the most important thing to me. Right. So what kind um, of questions were you asking those, um, th those people that you were seeking out at that time before you really kind of pulled the trigger and launched your, mm -hmm. your own firm? Honestly, more than I, um, more than I'm willing to admit, I was just looking for encouragement a lot. <laughs> I was so, really looking to sit down with somebody and for somebody to say, do it, do it, yeah. do it, do it, do it. Yeah. Um, but then it was the questions about who to use for malpractice. Yeah. Do I need an office? Um, how do I go about giving notice, especially to individuals who I had known had left a firm similar to what mine, the one that I was working at looked yeah. like? Um, or do you... Uh, did you take clients with you and how did you go about that? And did you get yeah. an ethics opinion on how to give notice and uh, how to take clients and um, questions like that? Was it like important that? to you at that time to leave with, a, in a positive way, to have an yes. amicable relationship with the firm that you were at? Yes. It okay. was so important to me because I I liked where I worked. Yeah. I, I am so grateful for the experience that I got. Excuse me. Yeah. I am... I appreciated everything that sure. that firm gave to me and I wanted to leave on a good note, yeah. not just because I, I felt that way, but also I'm smart enough to understand, look, I'm serving clients. Some of these I'm going to take with me. I need to work with these people later on down the road to resolve liens. Yeah. I need, there, there might come a time where I need to call on these people if, you know, I need some file material that I, I, that wasn't included or, you know, it's just, it was so important Such to me Such a small not... world yeah. and you just never know a few years down the road how your paths are going to cross in the future. You don't. Yeah. Yeah. For instance, I mean, there was a, a, um, a, a funeral for somebody else who um, had worked there and I attended and, and saw my old boss and, you know, it's hugs all around. And it was support for my former coworker. And it was, you know, that's just how I want it to be. It's yes. not, it's not, see ya, I'm one foot out the door, but right. that's also not to say I'm a hundred percent happier <laughs> right. in what yeah. I'm doing than yeah. what they, within what he created, what they've created. Um, right. It, this is where I'm supposed to be is yes. where I am now in my own firm. So, so it was so your... important. Sorry. So you started your own firm. That was about three years yeah. ago. Three and years ago. Yep. And now you saw this need for all of these other colleagues that were coming to you asking for that kind of advice you were seeking out. And so then that led to lure of law. Um, yes. So is the lure part, does that have anything to do with fishing in Minnesota? So that's the No. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> Okay, because I was wondering, maybe like that was an important part of your life. <laughs> My husband's a big fisherman and a skateboarder, as you can see. Nice. Um, awesome. But no, it's not. I just, I was brainstorming names and I like alliteration and yeah. lure of law is fun. And I love it. So oh, tell me, I saw this and I'm kind of, le you know, kind of leading you into this uh, whole idea about your launch of Lure of Law. Mm -hmm. This was one of the cooler things I've seen. Um, you had a launch party, which for a lot of my clients sounds very uncomfortable. <laughs> so tell me about <laughs> that. <laughs> so Lure of Law is this thing that's near and dear to my heart. It's something that is, I, can, I feel like I'm creative in it. Yeah. And I was I'm explaining to you earlier that my law practice, what I do in workers' compensation is I help plumbers and electricians yeah. and people in the trades for the most part. Sure. Um, and so I, it's a completely different clientele than who I'm serving in the world of law. And so I feel like I have this opportunity to be a lot more creative, yeah. a little bit more feminine in my branding, in my messaging, and just overall in my approach to it. Yeah. And that's something that I've been missing. So I, um, 
in my law practice. I've been missing that in my law practice. So I just wanted to take every opportunity I could to celebrate, to just be, to have fun, to bring people together, to, um, create really beautiful images. Yeah. And so I, um, well, first of all, I want to tell you that I launched Lure of Law and my, one of the things that's so beautiful about owning your own law firm is you get to choose, you know, what you do day to day. Okay. Yeah. So I, um, and I posted about this a couple of weeks ago. I was pregnant with a little girl, uh, last October. So about a year ago. And so she was due last June and I had planned to take a maternity leave. And so I was thinking, well, I'll be off this summer. This will be great. You know, I'll have a maternity leave. And I started making plans to take maternity leave. And, um, my little baby girl had Turner syndrome and didn't make it through the pregnancy. I'm and so sorry. But in my, oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, but in my head, I, I, I had a summer off. So I was like, I'm taking my summer. And so I yeah. just decided like, you know, as part of uh, kind of like my grieving process, but also just to have some fun, um, I was going to spend some extra time with my, uh, my daughter who's almost five now this summer. Yeah. So I cut back on my hours a little bit at my law office over sure. the summer. And when you give your time, your brain time to rest, yes. it will come up with brilliant ideas. Yes. You, you just, you have this space. You have space. Yes. yes. You have space to think and to be creative. Yes. And so on my summer off, I came up with Lure of Law as this concept. <laughs> and my brother, my husband told me that my brother uh, said to him, leave it to Kristen to start a business on her summer off. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, I relate to that on so many levels. Like oh. I, I can't turn my brain off. And so the idea of it being spacious is where it like sometimes runs even faster. Like all of a sudden yes. those ideas are just spiraling because it has, it has room where you're not thinking about just all of those day to day kind of yes. tedious tasks. Yes. So this so was let yourself do it. this past yeah. summer or less or 2020? This past summer. So okay. it was really like July and August that I got going on it. Oh my gosh. So this like was that. very recent. It's because, pretty recent. Yeah. So you just, and then so let's lead into this like launch party. So you kind of put this idea of lure of law together mm-hmm. and, and to just back up one step, it, the approach is slightly different from typical like business development coaches for yes. law firms, right? Like, tell me about that part of it. Uh, oh, I, I don't know if I understood. Can you say, can you say so, your So like your approach, time? it's not just like, let's, let's develop your law firm, like a business developer kind of coach. It Got seems it. like your approach is more like, let me help you move from this corporate law firm job that although it provides safety, it doesn't really support your life and your, mm-hmm. your, your soul, um, mm-hmm. into launching their, their solo firm like that. Yeah. That, getting them over the hump of that decision. Is that yeah. right? Or, or it is. Yeah. Okay. It starts very much while they are still in, in a job where they're just deciding what, how can I be happier in my life? How can I be happier in my practice of law? Because one of the core values of lure of law is retention of attorneys yeah. because we are losing attorneys to addiction and to mental illness and to burnout. And yeah. so one of the goals of lure of law is really, um, retention and so it's and it all sounds about like just to make it a healthier yes. place, both like physically and mentally. It yes. seems like overall, it's just not a very healthy kind profession. of profession industry. Isn't just, that the it's truth? It's so full of negativity and conflict. And, and, it and that's what Ellie Katz to be. Exactly. And Ellie Katz talks about like, if conflict is your business model, you need to rethink it yeah. um, because- I think a lot of lawyers do do think that that they're 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 making money out of conflict. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and it doesn't have to be. I mean, it can be a lot more collaborative. And then, you know, that's the practice of law itself. But then, in terms of the professional staying healthy, you know, that's yes. the big the big mission for Lure of Law. And so, I'm not. Um, naive enough to think that going solo is um, the answer for everybody by any means, because that's going to cause some people way more stress. Like, right. That's not for everybody by any means, but for some people it is. And that's who I gathered together at that launch luncheon. I was calling it a launch in, but that didn't really take <laughs> off. Um, 
So I just, the, the idea of lure of law, I'm calling it mentorship because I want it to be very relational. I want yes. it to very much be walking alongside others. And like I was explaining to you earlier, there are coaches out there. There are consultants out there who will help you grow, who will help you scale. But who is who is walking you to the next step? Who is yeah. saying, you can do this and here are some tools. Right. And that's what Lure of Law is all about. So in the launch of it, I was just working this summer, slowly my summer off, of um, getting visibility. Um just putting myself out there, getting my, my branding together. Yeah. And then I thought, okay, once my daughter's back in school, once I'm back to, you know, full time, I am going to really truly launch this. And I thought, what, what does a launch look like? And I just thought, well, it can look like whatever. Yeah. Let's do something fun. And so I just started thinking and I was, I thought, um, let's just throw a little party. Let's I love have it. delicious food. Let's go to one of those places that I wish I would have gotten married at, but I just didn't because, you know, I was young and didn't have money and, right. you know, like, let's go look at some venues, let's yeah. um, get some flowers, let's have a fun party and let's do it in the middle of the day so it can kind of be like, I was saying, um, you know, business lunch meets bridal shower you know like it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's fun, it's, yes. it's collegiate, it's not your typical get your name but it was very high it looked like it was like a you know very high quality like you were making very deliberate choices and uh I'm familiar with the caterer you used and they (gasps) make delicious uh, things and you know just little things like that like all those little details and from my side of it like those are all branding choices and those really tie in with that whole these are your potential clients for for the most part and it ties Mm -hmm. in with that user or client experience that is all part of your brand. And so when they have that experience, they know that that's what they can expect from you. That's a really good point. Yes, yeah. those those choices were deliberate. This the, that was, you know, every every choice that went into what we were having at the lunch, what we were doing at the lunch, what we were eating at the lunch was very much what does this say about what Lure of Law is doing and Lure yeah. of Law's mission. And um so how many people did you have at the luncheon? I think that there luncheon. were like 30, th- 25 <laughs> nice. to 30 people. And that seems like a good size during COVID, it, you know, where it it's was. not like overwhelming where people are like, oh, I don't really want to be there with 300 people. And, it was you know. comfortable. It was yeah. very comfortable. I don't think anybody felt unsafe. It was also a time of year where we had access to some outdoor space and nice. it was just fun. The, the one thing that I will say, because you you had said, um, you know, about making those choices with the cater, with the location, whatever else. Yeah. One thing that, it, that I'm very lucky to have had in this business launch was a, my law office earns income, right? I, yeah. I am earning income. Sure. I have money to invest in lure of law. Yeah. When I started my law office, I was like... I have got $2,000 to yeah. launch this business. I need a new computer. I need to pay a, a, for a domain. I like what, where is every dollar going? Yes. Because I am starting from the bottom up. But I've grown that over three years and, and I want to invest in myself and I want to invest in others. And so I took the income and I put that into Lure of Law. Yeah. And I said, let's just go all out on this yeah. launch, right? And that's that's what put me in the position to be able to do that. So I'm by no means saying, when you launch, you got to have an awesome party because no, you're not always going to have that, right? You're not. And I think that's a it's a good point to to make sure that it fits within your budget. Mm-hmm. But I think a lot of the clients that you're working with and who, clients who I work with, they're not always fresh out of law school either. And right. so maybe they have been planning this for years and years. I've worked with a lot of clients over the last 18 months during COVID who have been thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it and COVID hit. And all of a sudden they're like, this is it, that now is the time. And so now I have to just pull, you know, they've hopefully been kind of setting some money aside and and anticipating that. And this is still, if, if they can squeeze that in the budget, I think it's still a great way of recognizing how important that network is in pulling them all together and, and also just doing it physically, because I think a lot of people just throw it all online and do social media and they might send out emails, but getting together physically, people have a different kind of reaction to that. And it oh, feels yeah. really different. So, it feels fun. Yeah. And after so many, um, um, 
what's the word I'm looking for? You know, Zoom networking yes. calls and yes. so, so many of those virtual whatever. Um, it felt so good to get together in person. And, and that's exactly what I did. I got my network together. So I invited people who I know through my law office, you know, referral partners, um, individuals who have mentored me in the past, individuals who I went on to mentor. Um, it was a group of attorneys. So I limited it to attorneys. Yeah. And what I said to my network was, this is what I'm doing. Come and celebrate it with me. Let me tell you what it's about. Let's yeah. have a good lunch. That's what you're going to get out of it. There's no such thing as a free lunch, right? Yeah. There's a deli- You're going to get a delicious lunch and you're going to let me tell you what this is. Yeah. Um, and the other thing that I did was I invited those individuals in my network to invite others. So I said, oh, nice. if you know someone who is thinking of going solo or is on the fence about it, please invite them. Please give me their name. I will get them on the list. Yeah. And so... And did that work? Did you get a few? A few. Not as many as I thought I might. A few, which was great. Yeah. But it really ended up being more an audience of my network of individuals who had either gone solo or who were thinking of it or who are happy with where they are but are still very influential in my life because they're great practice. Practitioners. They're sure. just good people for me to call on. They're supportive of me. And so what it ended up being because of the nature of who was in the audience was I was telling them what I was doing with Lure of Law and I, and I was cognizant of the fact that if I'm, you know, there's, let's say that there were 15 solo practitioners in the audience. If I'm getting those calls, those, how did you do it, Kristen? Can yes. I do it too? They are too. Right. Yes, absolutely. And not everybody has it in their nature to take the time to mentor and not exactly. everybody gets enjoyment out of that but I do yeah. I love it yeah if I can help you if I have the time and in in the energy and the and I do I mean yeah. I have it yes. so I will help people so what I was saying to my network is I'm trying to make the profession healthier as a whole what I'm yeah. asking you to do is if you have time to mentor somebody who comes to you to ask about this please do it yeah if you don't have time or you don't enjoy it you send them to lure of law and I can help you yeah help them or do both Yes. Mentor them and send them to Lure of Law. Sure. And so they kind of just went out into the world with that mission. And the the response has been so positive. My nice. network was so happy to come together. There were lots of connections made. There were, you know, there were hugs and there was happiness. And there is beautiful images that I can keep and share forever now while I'm promoting Lure of Law. And it was so fun. And, and, yeah. and the reason that... It was so important for me to do that is because what I know from launching my law office three years ago is that my network wants to help me. Yes. I have built a network. I have surrounded myself with people who are willing to help if I call upon them. And I think that's a really important point because... I think a lot of the fear around people pulling their network in is they are worried they're going to come across as obnoxious, Mm -hmm. that people are just going to resist that, that they're like, oh, I have so many other things going on in my day. They, they don't want to help, but to, to hear that from your side, your experience was that most people are wanting to help you and they're really there rooting you on and, and boosting that up. I think that's, it's an important lesson to learn so that people recognize that they're there to help and they're, they're willing and and interested in in helping. And then you also tied this in even to just like Google reviews and your search results and things like that. Um, So did you ask those partners and things like that to also, uh, how did you approach the Google review thing? Did you ask for that or did, or how did you do that? So my Google reviews for Lure of Law, I just got up and running. I just got um, verified yeah. for um, Google with Lure of Law. But for my law office, so the law office of Kristen Jolai, um, I absolutely call on my network for Google reviews. So I have seven – today, at the time of this recording, I've got 72 reviews um, and which I think is a good yeah, number that's great. Yeah, for absolutely. being in business for three years, not using, um, one of the, um, what is it called? I wrote it down here. Oh, one of the review collection services. Oh I don't mean it yeah. Like that. It's very yeah. much you know, me. And nobody likes them. that. <laughs> I mean, everybody, it just sounds like, you know, this robot, like they really want that personal request and to feel yeah. like it's coming from you, not just, yeah. Yeah. Those are always kind of, eh. <laughs> yeah, I don't use anything like that. It's just me. I'm a solo practitioner. I've got a paralegal, but um, I ask for the reviews. And so yeah. 
um, you know, we can talk for days about asking clients for reviews and how to go about that. And the funny thing about that is that a lot of people, a lot of lawyers say, it's, I know it's uncomfortable, but here's how you do it. And I just read that or I look at that and I'm like, how is that uncomfortable? It's not. And I, I can tell you how, but that's maybe for another day. Yeah. But anyway, putting yeah. that aside, putting aside asking clients for reviews. Yes. Ask your network for reviews. If your network understands how you practice, if yes. you're if you have worked with somebody in your network at, like as co-counsel or you were representing um, an individual in a matter that kind of aligned with maybe a different type of representation, different type of practitioner, and they know your work, ask that individual yeah, for absolutely. a Google review, right? Yeah. And Google really cares about that stuff. So that's another way to just really boost uh, your results very organically through Google and uh, get that message out there. And, and you know, it, especially when you're going back to that idea of launching with a limited budget, like this is a thing that you can do that doesn't cost you anything, especially doesn't if you don't use those third party. <laughs> yeah, you just uh, ask for it. And yeah. people are happy to do that for you. There are ways you can make it easier too. You know, of yeah. course there's that. Send them the link. And yes, yeah, send yeah. them the link. Don't say go Google it on the right hand side, click, you hit, no, send them the link, figure yeah. out in Google My Business how to send the link, text yes. it to them, email it to them, then they just click it. And right. they're already on their phone, they're already on their computer, and they can just write it. Exactly. I also think it's important when you are asking your network um, to give you a Google review, have them identify, you know, who they are, that yes. they know you in a professional capacity, or yeah. they've worked with you on XYZ. I think that's equally as important because I've, you know, speaking of not limiting your Google reviews to just clients, I've had cold calls where somebody has called in and I haven't been able to help them, but I've said, hey, this is, you know, maybe who you could call sure. or you don't need an attorney right now for X, Y, and Z. Um, and they've said, you've been so helpful and you can't even, you know, you're not even going to represent me, but you've been so helpful. I'll say to them, you know what, if you found this, if you found this helpful, Will you leave me a Google review? Will you just say that you called in and I provided an answer to a question? And people have done that yeah. on my on my Google reviews. You can see. Well, um, and the the flip side of that is, I think we're all uh, after being online now for however many years we've been used to reviews and everything. We're all a little skeptical, and you know, you you can tell on Amazon when they're paid reviews or it's kind of the re repeat sort of robotic looking reviews. And so I think that helps to validate that review too, to say, I, I worked with so them too. on XYZ. This was my experience. It just looks more legitimate. Yeah. And um, you know what else, Karen? You know what yeah. else makes it more legitimate? And people think, well, what if I get a bad review? If you have a oh, bad no. one, if you've it's got good. 72 <laughs> reviews and you don't have one bad one, yes. that's a red flag. It is. And I've seen studies on this where people who have a 5.0 like average rating where they don't have a single, that is more suspect than people who have like 4.95 average rating because they expect that there's going to be one. And oftentimes people will look at it and say, oh, that's just a crazy person. Yeah. But you want that True. outlier to see, okay, how crazy is that crazy person? Or is there something a little bit legitimate about it? And so that's where people really evaluate. And your response to that is more important than almost all of the rest of those reviews. Isn't that true? I've read yeah. the literature that you're talking about because the first time I got a bad review, I Googled it. I was Freaked like, what out. do I do to get this out? <laughs> like, how can I report this? I yes. can't have somebody seeing this. And then that's what I found is yeah. those articles that said, it's okay to have a bad one. You it's don't good. want a bunch of five-star reviews. I'm even happy. I don't ask for five-star reviews. Some of the literature says, no, you, you should know, ask for a review and ask for a five-star review. No. I ask for a review. If I get four stars, I'm like, that's great because yeah. Because that means they got good service. Maybe they think it could be improved and that's something for me to learn from. Yeah. But if they're all five stars, they're not. That's weird. It doesn't sound not right. legit. No, yeah. exactly. And I like what you said too about your response. And I think that there's, you know, again, you could talk for hours about how you respond. And yes. some of them are worth a response. Some of them don't respond. It makes you look crazy. Yeah, um, exactly. But on some level, even you can just be consider it and, you know, have a very professional response and say, yep. uh, you know, sometimes there are reviews that have nothing to do with, with your company mm -hmm. and you can just say, you know, we never work together. I don't know who, you, you know, like That's in a professional true. appropriate way. Yeah. Um, but at least to have some response. So it looks like you're, you know, alive and, yeah. and out there. Absolutely. 
Um, so Kristen, what book have you been reading that you can recommend? Uh, I know that you've listened to some episodes and, and you know that the end kind of part of the episode is where I ask for a book review. So yes. what book do you have that you can recommend? I've been reading so much fiction lately. I yeah, go through too. spurts where I cannot get enough nonfiction, but right now I'm like in this fiction space. So it's not a book I'm reading right now, but it's a book that changed my life. And it's uh, You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero. Oh, nice. Um, I loved that book. I read it at the time that I was working at the firm and when I knew I was unhappy and I knew I had to do something different. Yeah. And that book helped me to solidify it's time to make a move. Yes. It's time to do something great. It's I am capable. The world is a big, beautiful place. And if I'm not living my life, what am I doing here? Yes. And that book did it for me. It changed my life. I go back to it all the time. I gave it out as a gift um, oh, I love at that. my luncheon. Oh, good. Yeah, I gave away like the the books that were super inspiring to me. So that was one of them. Um, her follow up book, uh, "You Are a Badass at Making Money." It's the Ooh. one with the green cover. So there's the the "You Are a Badass" is the yellow cover one, and that one's wonderful. But then when I was launching my law office, and like I told you, it was you know very much on the cheap. Sure. Um, the You Are a Badass at Making Money was really influential in that launch as well. That is so perfect. And that ties in just with this whole idea of launching and just yeah. you know, like getting that mindset, you know, knowing that that is the first step where mm -hmm. if you don't really believe that you can do it, you probably won't. And so you have to get into that, that, you know, put those pants on and wear that idea that this is going to happen and I can do it. And, you know, I often will look around and say, oh my gosh, if that person did it, I can for sure do it. And like, you have to kind of see That's what's out there. That's one of Allie Katz's lines too, yes. I think, because I read her book, New Business Model. And she said that her mantra when she was doing it is, if that person can do it, yes. I can do it. And I believe that. I do too. Just because, you know, you just have to see what's out there and get this sense of um, how accessible it can be. So, all right, well, we will link to that book in on your episode page and then on the library, we'll have all of you know the links to Amazon and everything. That sounds really great. But um, thank you so much for being here. I feel like this was so helpful to get people to kind of combine the idea of getting to that right mindset, but then some great ideas of how to uniquely launch and get, you know, get yourself through that hurdle of the fear of it, but then, you know, some cool ideas to, to make your, get yourself out there and bring your network in to help support like all of your goals. So thanks again, Kristen. I really appreciate Thank it. Thank you for having me. I could talk to you all day. It's been so fun. <laughs> Thank know. you so much. Absolutely. Thank you for listening to this episode on the Council Cast podcast. I know that by implementing what you heard today, your law firm will achieve more. Be sure to visit the website at council-cast.com for the resources mentioned on this episode. If you enjoyed the episode, I would appreciate it if you could rate and review the podcast on Apple and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. See you on the next one.